Hello, good day, everybody. Welcome back to our subject readings in Philippine history. We are down to our last discussion for our chapter two, which is all about the content and contextual analysis of selected primary sources in Philippine history. So our last discussion for this chapter is all about the analysis of Corazon Aquino's speech before the United States Congress. So, Cory Aquino's speech was an important event in political and diplomatic history of the country, which is the Philippines, because it has arguably cemented the legitimacy of the EDSA People Power Revolution or the EDSA government in the internal era. So, overall, <clears throat> um, the the speech talks of her family background, no, especially her relationship with her late husband, si Senator Ninoy Aquino. So the speech of Cory Aquino is seen as a pivotal event that um contributed to solidifying the legitimacy of the EDSA government in the internal, if you say internal, that is for domestic and possibly um, diplomatic realms, marking a crucial chapter in political history of the Philippines. And it was well known that it was Ninoy who served as the real leading figure in the opposition at the time. And indeed, Ninoy's eloquence and charisma could very well compete with that of the dictatorship or the dictator, the si Marcos. And also, sa speech ni Corey Aquino, he talked about the length about Ninoy's toil, suffering at the hands of the dictatorship that he resisted. Therefore, Corazon Aquino acknowledged in her speech that her late husband, Ninoy Aquino, was uh, the true leader of the opposition during the oppressive regime of Ferdinand Marcos. And Ninoy was known for his... Um, eloquence and charisma, the qualities that compete those of Marcos. And also in her address or in Cory Aquino's speech, Cory extensively discussed Ninoy's enduring struggle and um, suffering under the dictatorship as Ninoy resisted its oppressive rule. And this acknowledgement emphasized the sacrifices made by Ninoy and added a personal dimension to the um, narrative of the fight against the dictatorship. Even when Aquino proceeded talking about her new government, she still went back to Ninoy's legacies and lessons because during this time, Cory Aquino continued to emphasize the significance of Ninoy Aquino's legacy and lessons as she discussed her new government. Moreover, her attribution of the revolution to Ninoy's death demonstrate not only Corey's personal perception on the revolution, but since she was at the point in our history. Furthermore, um, Corey attributed the revolution, diba? particularly the people power movement to Ninoy's death. This 
is not only reflected Corey's personal perspective, but also it underscored the historical context, emphasizing the pivotal role that uh, Ninoy's sacrifice played in sparking the events leading to the People Power Revolution. So the acknowledgement of Ninoy's role um, served to connect the past struggles with the present government, reinforcing, no? reinforcing the continuity of the fight for democracy in the country, which is the Philippines. So the ideology or the principles of the new democratic government can also be seen in the same speech of Cory Aquino. And Cory Aquino was able to draw the sharp contrast between her government and of her predecessor by expressing Cory's commitment no, to a democratic constitution drafted by an independent <clears throat> commission. And Cory Aquino, she claimed that such constitution upholds the rights and liberty of Filipino people because Corazon Aquino claimed that the constitution she supported and committed was designed to protect and respect the rights and freedom of Filipino people. And Corey also hoisted herself as a reconciliatory agent after more than two decades of polarizing authoritarian politics. So Cory Aquino aimed to uh, foster a sense of national healing and unity as the country transitioned into a new era of democratic governance. And Cory claimed that her main approach was through peace now, no? kalinaw, and daily sword of war. Despite Cory's effort to hoist herself as the exact opposite of Marcos, her speech still revealed certain parallelism between Kankori and the Marcos government. This is seen in terms of continuing the alliances between the Philippines and the U.S., despite the known affinity within the said superpower and Marcos. So the Aquino regime, as seen in Corey's acceptance of the uh, invitation to address the U.S. Congress and the content of the speech decided to build and continue with the alliances alliances between the Philippines and United States and effectively no Ignota effectively implemented an essentially similar foreign policy to that of dictatorship for example Corey recognized that the large sum of foreign debt incurred by Marcos regime never benefited the Filipino people. And gayun pa man, no? nevertheless, Corey expressed ang iyahang intention to pay off sa katong mga utang sa Pilipinas. Unknown to many Filipinos was the debt of the dictator and not for the country. Utang ni Marcos, daily utang sa Philippines. And Cory's decision is an indicator of her government's intention to carry on that driven economy. So, reading through Aquino's speech, no, we can already take cues not just on Corey's individual ideas and aspiration, but also the guiding principles and framework of the government na iyahang represented. Therefore, revisiting Cory Aquino's speech is not only a reflection 
on a historical moment, but also a timeless call to support the ideals of democracy and freedom. It reminds us of the um, importance of international solidarity and the role that shared values play in shaping global relations and supporting nations in their pursuit of democratic governments. And that is the revisiting Corazon Aquino speech before the U.S. Congress. Thank you so much, everyone. And I hope that you learned something with our last discussion under chapter two. Thank you and have a great day.